Hello guys and welcome to another Body Stenics tutorial. If you're new to our channel, be sure to start off by subscribing and hitting the bell icon for notifications so that way you don't miss any future videos just like this one. In today's tutorial, we're going to analyze skill training and how to program it into your weekly and monthly training regime. A lot of athletes typically get stuck when it comes to how to program their skill goals efficiently throughout their training weeks. This is why we at Body Stenics have become passionate about teaching athletes how to do this efficiently so that way you see safe and rapid progress. Trial and error can become frustrating at times throughout your calisthenics journey. And this is the reason why we are here to put things into perspective and help you gain a greater understanding on how you can begin right away structuring your training in accordance to your goals so that way you see progress and achievement in your selected skills. So without further ado, Let's get started. First and foremost is to have a clear goal in mind. Ensure that you don't select more than one to two skills at any given time. This is so that you don't overextend yourself, experimenting with too many skills at once, and that you are able to hone in and focus on one to two skills, so that way you are able to see greater results. Your first priority is to practice the movement pattern consistently of that skill which you have selected. So if your goal is to simply hold a handstand, ensure that you are doing multiple kick-ups throughout your training days. If your goal is the front lever, ensure that you are working on consistently practicing the scapular retraction entrance on a consistent basis. Let's say your goal is the handstand push-up. Ensure that you're consistently practicing this on the wall first, and then slowly get into the more difficult and challenging freestanding progressions. The second pointer is to rest long and be fresh as much as possible going into each set. A common question a lot of athletes ask and wonder about is how long to rest for between each set. When focusing on skill training, it's vital that you rest adequately no matter how long that may be. Resting times may range from two to five minutes depending on your level and the intensity of the exercise which you are performing. But nonetheless, if you feel like you need to rest longer than five minutes, feel free to do so as the priority and goal when skill training is to practice form and always focus on quality over quantity. So it's vital that you are as fresh as possible going into each set in order to maximize your results in your skill training. The third pointer is to not rush. Do not think like you always need to make that rep or achieve that skill this session each time. The whole idea is to achieve a skill, no matter what that is, using the best form possible. So don't overdo one movement. If you feel, you're, if you feel like you are fatiguing, leave it for the next day and go on to something else. Finally, try to remove all of your ego out of your training. Cut off a bad rep, don't be afraid to start over, so that way you get yourself into the habit of performing quality over quantity. The second category which you must take into account when structuring your skill training is the strengthening exercises. The strengthening exercises are most commonly rep based and they must be directly linked to the skill which you are aiming to achieve. This is your opportunity to structure and plan areas which you are lacking in strength or lacking in engagement. This is where you dedicate time to practice and fill in these gaps. Rep ranges for strengthening exercises should be no more than four to six reps with a clear focus on performing perfect form rather than hitting your rep targets. Two quality reps is much better than four to six rushed and sloppy reps. The next category which you must factor in in your skill training is endurance and conditioning. Endurance and conditioning rep range typically is between 8 to 12 reps. Anything beyond that is also appropriate. Reps for endurance and conditioning must be high and difficulty of the exercise must be low. It's also vital that you practice both push and pull endurance and conditioning exercises, regardless whether your skill which you're aiming to achieve is push or whether it is pull. And this is so that you achieve general and overall strength without any imbalances. One of the final categories which you must factor in in your skill training are the core exercises. The core exercises must always be performed in the end of each training, so that way you don't tire out your torso before your skills, before your skill training. Try to always perform a variety of core exercises across all body planes, ranging from hanging core exercises to laying down core exercises, 
and also a lot of hollow body core exercises. Rep ranges for core exercises should range anything between 6 to 12 reps depending on the intensity of the chosen exercise. Thanks for watching today's tutorial guys. If you guys found value then be sure to subscribe and also hit that bell icon for notifications. We upload a new tutorial every Wednesday and Saturday at 3pm European Easter Summer Time. For those athletes who want a more in-depth approach to their calisthenics progress, be sure to get your own copy of the 100 Calisthenics Secrets book. And for an even more depth analysis on how you can progress as an all-round calisthenics athlete, be sure to get access to our exclusive Ultimate Calisthenics course. And for those athletes who want to join the Bodysthenics global family of athletes who are taking their skills and strength to the next level, be sure to apply for online coaching today in order to fast track your progress and achieve elite calisthenics status. I'm George, Bodysthenics coach. See you guys in the next video.